There's no doubt about who the big winners of the Summer Olympics will be. London's bookmakers. They already handle billions of pounds a year in bets on horse and dog races and soccer matches. But the Olympics mean a gambling bonanza. The gamblers just pay, pocket the slip and hope for the best. Ami Mohammed Jafar has been betting for 40 years. He generally sticks to horse races, but he's making an exception for the Olympics. From what I see on the box every day, they discuss, and the people I talk to, I think the biggest betting will go during the Olympics, you know. And in this country, is the, the bookies will be taking some money, you know, that serious money. The global betting industry brings in hundreds of billions of euros a year. Gamblers bet on every sport and game down to the smallest decision. Betting goes on even during the games. It's easy to get lost in the jungle of ever-changing data, and this opens the door to manipulators. So here we are in the, uh, the main hub, the Fraud Detection System office. Um, as you can see, we've got a number of analysts in today. The analysts are like detectives hunting down manipulators. Along with the bookies, their clients include the Union of European Football Associations and National Sports Associations. The technical system is set up or um, monitoring over 300 bookmakers worldwide, processing 100 million data sets a day, and using approximately 25 different betting algorithms to attack the same problem, to identify potential irregularities in the betting markets. Most irregularities occur in soccer, an example from an Eastern European first division match. In the 50th minute, the score was nil-nil, and yet bettors were still putting their money on a huge win for one side. Then suddenly, the home team scored five goals. They were very confident of there being more than, more than two goals, then more than three goals, um, and all of this was very successful. The people that are betting this game clearly knew what the outcome of the game was going to be in advance. This match was fixed, but not only was it fixed, numerous people on both teams would have been involved with this, possibly the referee. Um, it was highly coordinated. Sport Radar estimates that about one soccer match in a hundred is fixed. One well-known example was the two penalty kicks awarded by referee Robert Heuser in the 2004 German Cup, and he called no fouls. Croatian gamblers had bought Heuser. Allegations of match-fixing even hit the Italian national team just before the European Championship. A big problem with prosecuting manipulators is that they're often based in Asia, beyond the reach of the law. They maintain global networks of fronts that can place bets on command. Players in the minor leagues are easier to buy. There's no chance of bringing down this system. It's so well established by now and so difficult to prosecute on a global level that we're afraid we'll be seeing entirely different dimensions in the future. Friedhelm Althans is predicting that these new dimensions might even turn up at the Summer Olympics in London. He heads investigations of the international betting syndicates. Our background information confirms that the Olympics will be especially hard hit by manipulating, because the games include lots of individual disciplines. Where whole teams can't be manipulated, it's much easier to get individual athletes to produce the desired results. British law enforcement authorities and the International Olympic Committee are taking the threat very seriously. They put a special task force on the problem, after all, the Olympics are about fair competition, not gambling.